Today, I will talk about uh, WAVE, a program working for tackling transboundary plant pathogen through strong alliances for food and income security in West and Central Africa. The presentation will be centered around the WAVE model for food and income security. In uh, introduction, we'll talk about the crop, which is uh, cassava. Cassava is really our star crop at WAVE. It provides uh, staple food for an estimated 800 million people of worldwide. It's grown almost exclusively by small order farmers, especially women, uh, low cost of production, readily available planting material, Cassava uh, is very really tolerant to acid soils and production requires uh, very few inputs and give reasonable harvest. So really it's our star crops. Many problems uh, that we are tackling in addition to the cassava viral diseases. We have two type of diseases. We have, we have cassava mosaic disease. You see the symptoms here on cassava plants. You have also cassava burn streak disease. Here we have symptoms, the similar symptoms on the leaves, but additionally we have symptoms on the stems, but the roots. And it's the root that is eaten. It's the root that we are using uh, to do starch, to do, uh, to make uh, uh, our, our consumption for our consumptions. But this here disease is really creating loss of harvest, about 90 to 100% of harvest loss. The good news is that this disease, CBSD, on my right here, is not yet in West Africa. So it gives us an opportunity, a window of opportunity to be proactive. Both diseases are transmitted by the insect vectors that you see here, the little white flies that you see here. When they are feeding from a, a disease plant, from an unhealthy plant, they transmit the disease, the diseases, both diseases, but also through human activities to infected cuttings. When the virus is already in the cutting, it's there forever. And when a farmer use an effective cutting to, for his next uh, plantation, it's propagating the virus. CBSD, the one that is not yet in Africa, is expanding, as you can see here from this FAO map. And here we have Nigeria, a country of more than 200 million inhabitants. If this disease gets here, it's going to be a food crisis, not only in Nigeria, but in the whole West Africa. That's the reason why we would like to be proactive by doing something to curb these diseases. But to conduct cassava research in Africa, in Central and West Africa, we have challenges. Lack of leakages between various groups in the region, lack of awareness from government, lack of required facilities, lack of trained junior as well as senior scientists, lack of standardized diagnostic tool, lack of knowledge on, the, on those viruses and a lack of surveillance and response system. So WAVE is really trying to revert the tide. WAVE stands for Central and West African Virus Epidemiology. I will now talk about the genesis, the vision, the objectives, the model, and the achievement. WAVE was created by scientists from West and Central Africa who identified the need for plant disease surveillance, early warning system, and response preparedness. Those 10 scientists here you see are really the one who designed, developed, and created WAVE. We went through a process since 2012. We met program officer at BMGF in 2012. And it took us until 
March 2015, where we launched the project and had our inception meeting. The WAVE program is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the FCDO, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK. The WAVE vision is really disease-free crops for food and income security for all in Africa. Our objective is to increase our cultural productivity and sustainability in Africa through coordinated management of plant disease threats. Our approach is no borders and no silos in combating disease without borders, because those pathogens, they do not know borders. For that purpose, we have put together a network of 17 NAS. The phase one of WAVE that started in 2015 started with the countries that you see in red. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six countries. I see yes, seven countries. And uh, this uh, phase lasted three years. And after that, we started the phase two. And we had uh, the country in yellow that joined. We have to say that we are working with national agricultural system, research system, which are university, national universities, or uh, national research centers. That's where WAVE is hosted in each of the countries we are working on. We have four outreach countries in blue. I say that we work without silos because although we are focused on pathogens, we also need to take into account the host and the vector in a changing environment. We talk a lot about climate change now, and this environment has to be taken into account. We are plant virologists mostly, so we have to bridge across disciplines, work with uh, entomologists work with uh, breeders so that we can achieve disease free crop for food and income security for all in Africa. Our model is really an impact driven model centered around the NAS. We co design and deliver science with the advanced laboratories, but also depending on the needs of the customers who are smallholder farmers, extension agencies, traditional rulers, government, private sectors, all done with donors like BMGF, FCDO, but also institutional, regional institutions like ICAS, ECOWAS, CORAF. Because we want to go far, fast, we have to go together. Like those birds of different species, we build this network that I talk about. But we also need needed to build capacity because in 2015, when we started, these infrastructure were missing. Human capacity was missing, even financial capacity, which is needed to, uh, to, 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 to manage funds that we have was not at the good level. So we have to work on at all these levels. For infrastructures, we have now built or refurbished 13 laboratories in Central and West Africa. Nine of them are 100% functional. You see that from this map here. In DRC, that's where we started. We cut this tree that we see here and today, uh, uh, instead of this tree, this is the building that we have. This is the uh, wave laboratory in uh, Eastern DRC. In Côte d'Ivoire, we have four laboratories. We have the main office because the program wave is headquarters in Côte d'Ivoire in Abidjan. Here you see uh, part of the virology lab, part of uh, another lab that we have here for to conduct very diagnostics. We have an education program centered around gender. We train a lot of uh, young female, but not just for them to have a degree. After obtaining their degree, 
we are even working with them to develop their career. And uh, we are doing that with a program named Awards. Our science really uh, is around understanding the pathogen, but also the host and the vectors, like I said. And all that is done by conducting surveys, 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 cassava field surveys, where, from where we get the data. Here I'm showing uh, some, some data from the 2020 surveys that uh, we've conducted. Uh, 2015, we got about uh, 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 2,000 fields. But look, in 2020, we were about 300, 500 fields visited. Numbers of sample assets. Uh, what we have noticed is that the incidence after the work that was done by WAVE and other uh, programs in the countries where we started with phase one is really at an acceptable level. We need to reduce that, you know, around the 20, 30 percent. But in the new countries that John WAVE in, in phase two, Sierra Leone, Gabon, Cameroon, the incidence is still high and we still have work to do there. What we have noticed is that the white fly count, you know, is about seven white fly by plant in all those countries in the West and Central Africa, which is very low compared to in East Africa, where when you turn a cassava leaf, you can find more than thousand white flies on one leaf. And sometimes you have some damage on leaves, like here, the, the, the excretion of, of the white flies. Uh, uh, make this leaf decoloration. And for this, photosynthesis is not effective. We don't have that yet in West Africa or in Central Africa, but it's coming and we know, and we have to be proactive. That's the reason why we are working with advanced research institutions like uh, the Cassava Whitefly Project. With whom, with this project, we are working on studying the speciation along this route here, because we know that this species of white fly that in East Africa is using this road to come to, uh, to West Africa, uh, through Rwanda, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and Central Africa. So uh, this work is done uh, with uh, uh, the, the Sierra de la Reunion. We also know that we need to have an infield test, diagnostic test, uh, because Look at these maps, 2015, 2017, and 2020 in Nigeria, same place. You look at this virus in red, you see that it's spreading around. It's spreading by, it's spread by cuttings, by uh, people who are distributing cuttings around the country. And we need to regulate that. We need to use a simple sensitive loop mediated uh, amplification system like the one Sasha is using. And for that, we need funding, we need training, uh, and we need uh, uh, really to apply that to really uh, curb this spread. Because imagine that instead of EACMB, uh, which is a German virus, it was CBSD, the virus that is moving from East Africa. It will have been a very, very disastrous uh, situation in, uh, in Nigeria and in the whole West Africa. For that reason, also, we are working with a plant village in Pennsylvania State University uh, through the use of an app called Noro to conduct participatory surveillance in all the 10 countries where WAVE is working. This can help farmers to identify the disease uh, symptoms and avoid using infected uh, uh, cutting from those plants for the next field. We have launched already uh, this, the use of Noro in those countries. And uh, we are doing it through a massive awareness campaign that we call Together Let's Save Our Cassava. This really is ongoing as I speak. And from this uh, journal you see here, uh, this uh, article is from this journal in Burkina Faso. This is the wave team with farmers in uh, one uh, region in Burkina Faso called Banfora, where we launched the use of uh, this uh, neuro application for the participatory surveillance. We also know that we need to uncover 
the varum of uh, cassava in all the 14 countries where we are working. And we're doing that through high throughput sequencing in collaboration with Sierra La Reunion. We are also working on uh, genotyping all the cassava, uh, the grown cassava uh, varieties in West and Central Africa. And that we are doing through uh, in collaboration with uh, breeders in each of our countries, but also with the Nature and Cassava uh, program. You can see that uh, we are developing and getting a lot of data. Those data, we are not keeping them in our drought. They are, used, they are used to drive policies. As you can see here, with uh, uh, the University of Cambridge and one firm called Scriptoria in the UK, we have uh, uh, improved our data system. When we do our survey, we use an app that is in a tablet and uh, we have developed uh, a system that we call the Cube, which is an advanced multidimensional crop virus database. And our data is really cleansed from the app, from the lab to this Cube, where we can use the data for Power BI or even for modeling. As you can see here, this is really the Power BI uh, visualization of the survey that we conducted in 2020 in all those countries. And you can see incidence of the diseases. You can use so many different filters to, uh, to view what is happening. And this is, can be interactive. It can be this we are trying to put available to, to the public. With uh, the data for the cube, we can also do models. You can develop model with uh, our uh, collaborators at the University of Cambridge with uh, Gilligan's group. You can see here that this disease that is was found in East Africa around the Lake Victoria is spreading. But when you have the first incursion around the, around Cameroon, like a fire, Nigeria will be attacked, and the whole West Africa. This is really a prediction. And with that, we can, we can really talk to the governments. We can do a lot of awareness so that we can take measures. For example, if this disease is introduced by mistake around Kotonu, it will take six years for that thing to happen. And we cannot let that happen. We, can, we should be proactive. This modeling, this model also allows us to develop control strategies. Here on the left, you see that if nothing is done, but on the right, if we use strategic deployment of uh, resistant variety, we can stop the disease. And when those government officials see that, they understand that there's something we can do. We work a lot for stakeholders' uh, uh, awareness. Here we see uh, traditional rulers, uh, ministers. That was in uh, Benin where we did this uh, big meeting. And after that, we have been able to have the support. We have the endorsement by government to develop a response plan for cassava viral disease for 10 West and Central countries. And those response plans are in use now. They were developed with all the stakeholders in each of the countries. Just to say that is not with working by itself, but work with working with all the stakeholders, relevant stakeholders, ministries of agriculture, national extension agencies, national seed council, cassava growers, agricultural research institution, and relevant NGOs. We've understood the need to formally align uh, to uh, the regional framework. For example, we have signed uh, MOUs with the Economic Community for Central African States. We are also working with CORAF, which is the technical, the technical arm of ECOWAS for agriculture. We are even implementing a, a project called BioRist with, uh, with CORAF. This one is funded by the European Union. 
One of the objectives is to harmonize policies on transboundary regulation for the management of cassava virus diseases in West and Central Africa. We are working toward developing an alliance with uh, a structure called BMAF, with focusing on plant pathogens and BMAF on uh, pests, so that we can uh, protect better West and uh, Central African farmers. Because of all what we did, we, ECOWAS, which is our regional body in West Africa, erected WAVE into a regional center for plant pathogen, transplantary plant pathogens. And this was done uh, last year in, in May, so just one year ago. So in summary, um, what I want to say is that we have shown the power of togetherness to unleash agricultural productivity in Central and West Africa. From 10 West and Central African scientists, we started a small alliance, which is now this big network that you can see on this map. WAVE is working here in West Africa, West and Central Africa, but we have collaborators around the globe in Europe, in America, everywhere. And we think that there is more to come. What we have done should not be reinvented, but just repurposed so that we can also work on other uh, commodities like banana, you know, uh, like uh, sugar cane. For example, in Cote d'Ivoire, in northern part of Cote d'Ivoire in 2020, we've has identified a virus that is attacking sugarcane um, uh, plantation in, in another part of the, country, of the country. And what we have found is that this virus is 99% identified to a virus isolated in India. This one, this virus has never been reported beyond the Asian continent. So how, how has it been reaching Cote d'Ivoire? So we are working to control that virus. So in perspective, we think that uh, we should uh, place uh, strategic uh, laboratories like, like the web laboratories in all the countries if we really want to transform agriculture in Africa. We should expand wave to additional ICAS and uh, ECOWAS countries, meaning in Central and uh, West Africa. We are trying to get certification accreditation of our laboratories. And uh, if we do so, those laboratories, we would like them to be uh, uh, erected into reference laboratories in each of those countries where we are working. The goal, the ultimate goal being the creation of an international institute uh, for transboundary plant pathogen for a long-term effective control of plant pathogen in Central and West Africa. I would like to acknowledge uh, our donors, BMGF and FCDO. I would like to say a big thank you to the Global Plant Council for giving us this floor to present WAVE to the world. Uh, I would like to thank the WAVE partners, the institution hosting WAVE, but also my colleagues, web country directors and web staff. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Peter, for this presentation. It was uh, very, very clarifying, and I enjoyed it very much. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm like making a a master's on wave because this is the second time that I have seen a presentation uh, of wave and I'm, I'm very impressed with the development since last time. So there has been, uh, you are not just waiting things to happen, you are making things happen. So I'm I, congratulations. Thank you. And um, so I would say to, uh, to the attendees, if you have any questions, there are different options on how can you uh, you can ask you can always use the chat box write uh, the, your questions there and you can use the feature questions and answer that it's in the in the toolbar of your zoom 
and uh, while um, questions uh, start coming in, I will. I, I have. I have taken lots of notes, so um, I will be uh, making questions from the small details to things that are more more general. So I will start off something that might be of interest of early career researchers. So how do young researchers apply for, that, for the trainings that you have shown in your presentation? And, and that's one question. And the other one would be, what are your eligibility criteria in order to select them? Because you, you have three different levels. I understand that undergraduates, masters, and PhD students. So. Yeah. Thank you, Isabel. Um, I would like to say that since uh, after you've seen uh, in the presentation, we are working with universities, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, the WAVE program is hosted uh, in universities, national public universities, or in research uh, centers, national mm -hmm. agricultural research centers. So the criteria are different because in universities, you know, we have all levels of students. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can have a lot of students, they are applying, a lot of students are applying to get into the program. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you need to have a supervisor in your university. You also uh, need to, 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 to have good grades to, 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 to get into uh, the programs. So mm -hmm. uh, research centers, they have different uh, ways to, 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 to take the people for training because they are really, really, uh, uh, attached to uh, sustainability, so they would like to to have their own staff been uh, been trained. So they have already staff that are already in the in the system that uh, they, they they proposed to to do the trainings. So for universities, uh, we we really also have some interviews that we conduct. We can, if for example, we want a student uh, to conduct a, a subject on inbreeding. Uh, for example, we make some ads in all the universities in the country because it's not only uh, the university where the program is hosted, but all the other universities, uh, students can also apply. And then we make a, a, a very uh, rigorous selection uh, to have the best because really we would like to, to give opportunities to the best students uh, who are not all the time those who are fortunate to have uh, uh, the money to, to, to go to to Europe or to go to uh, to to Spain to, to get good uh, <laughs> good training, so we have to to to, to also uh, look at uh, uh, this aspect uh, to help really people who don't have a mean but are very good students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, it's very important that uh, we put a strong accent in uh, giving uh, more uh, chances to the ladies. Mm -hmm. uh, because as you have noticed, there were 10 uh, African scientists who created WAVE, but out of the 10, you have only one woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, uh, and this reflects what is happening on the ground. So we, we thought it was very important to train more, 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 more female. And, and I believe from the numbers you have shown that uh, you are succeeding because they were more, more ladies in all the levels of training. Than, yeah. uh, than their male counterparts. So congratulations yeah. on Dana <laughs> again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, and, and then also I wanted, uh, uh, following on this, um, are you training just plant pathologists or because at the very beginning I, I understood that the, the founders, they were mostly or all of them plant pathologists. So are you still going on that, on that direction or? Uh, actually, like I said, we are working without uh, borders and, we, and with no silos. So, for example, uh, we need to understand what is happening at the vector level, the white fly that is carrying this. So we have students uh, at WAVE that are doing PhD in characterizing those, uh, those vectors. And uh, we are not specialists. Me, I'm not, for example, a, a, an ophthalmologist. But we are working, we are collaborating with entomologists to help us train those students uh, so that uh, we, uh, we do not have students that just know about virology, but they understand uh, uh, entomology, they understand uh, breeding. So we, we are, like I said, we cannot just focus on, on pathology. 
Yeah, I I I I think it was very um important what you what you have been explaining that you have um, um approaching uh um this problem from uh, an holistic point of view so not just focusing on the plan not just focusing on the vector or the pathogen but in the whole cycle so i um i admire that <laughs> I will. I will continue. I will. Re, uh, I will take the opportunity right now to remind the audience that if we they want to post their own questions, they can do it through the chat box, or the question and answer feature. Um, and I will continue. You have you have mentioned several times when talking about different issues, or or activities that you are doing, that you you are um, focused on on co-design. That is that goes across uh, countries and also different types of stakeholders. How are you managing that? Because that's a difficult, difficult, really difficult, challenging task. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, but you know, uh, for example, uh, we have collaborators. Uh, we give the example of um, of uh, of a Gilligan's group in Cambridge University, they are developing model. But those models, they have to have data to develop those, those models. Mm -hmm. And those models also need to serve a purpose. See, so we discuss with them and we said, we would like a model that will serve this. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, for you to have this model, we need this, this and that data. So we design, for example, the app that we are using to conduct the survey based on the data, type of data that we can reach need for the model. Mm -hmm. But the type of, 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 of information we need for the model is also designed by what we think will be important to help the farmers. Mm -hmm. See. For example, for the participatory surveillance, this application, the Neuro, those farmers, they said they need, for example, a way to identify uh, plants that are without disease mm -hmm. so that they can use that for their next plantation. See, so that, so we talk with a developer and we say that will be very important for the farmers because uh, we think in addition to the participatory surveillance, that will help them to do a participatory sanitation. Mm -hmm. So they will get rid of everything that is disease in the, in the plantation. So that, that's where the co-design thing is important. I'd like to give you an example. Mm -hmm. When we were conducting our survey, we reached one uh, city and at the end, at the end uh, outside of the city, just outside the city, we had some women who were transforming cassava to do uh, to make a, a meal that is called acheke here. It's like uh, uh, yeah. so they were doing that the traditional way, and then we asked them, but we heard that you have a a cassava transport transformation. Uh, uh, system that has been put by the government there where you have machines to automatize and thing. And so why don't you do that there? Mm -hmm. They say, no, we cannot do that because then it's a problem for us to bring the ATK here to sell and people don't see us doing it. So it's difficult to sell. So mm -hmm. they're not using it. It's millions of, 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 of friends that have been used to build this, uh, this small uh, industry, but they are not using it mm -hmm. because the uh, government people did not talk to them, you know, before building that where they built it. So, so it's important. This could co designing thing is, is really important. Mm -hmm. I I agree. It's it's a it's a problem that it's just starting to be addressed. That there are many policies and uh, policy decisions are taken from a top-down perspective and then they are they are completely completely lost for the for the for the actual user the person who is going to use it they, they don't see uh, the usefulness of, yeah. of that policy that was put in place for them i agree with you <laughs> so 
uh, I'm going to, uh, to go a, li a little deeper on this. So uh, the way you are, you are, uh, you, you are acting like, like a hub, like the, the connection between the developer and the farmers and the rest of the stakeholders. That's the, the role the wave is having. Is that correct? Yes. And so, and, and those meetings, uh, how are you, um, did you manage during the pandemic? Because I've seen that you have done a lot during the pandemic. So uh, I assume that those meetings uh, took place uh, online. And how did you manage to engage with uh, farmers in that way? Because they are typically not very fond of the online yeah, of way course. of connecting. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that is really uh, where we say that uh, local leadership is very, very important. You see, you have to decentralize the way you work. Mm -hmm. You see, you need to work with uh, traditional rulers. For example, you have a village somewhere, there is a chief of the village. Mm -hmm. You know, the chief of the village, when is informed, can then transfer the information to is, 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 is the people who are sitting in, in, in his uh, council. And from that, in Africa, we have many ways, you know, you can have the, 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 the drum, you can have at night somebody yelling. There are many ways to, 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 uh, to convey uh, the information. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes. People also have a lot of uh, cell phones, you know, it's really developed here, WhatsApp mm -hmm. and all that. So, uh, but for us, the most important thing is really this contact, this uh, interaction, direct interaction with the farmers. So I have to admit that during the, the pandemic, we have been uh, limited somehow, mm -hmm. but the good thing is that here in Africa, uh, we, uh, we have some, um, uh, lock, lock, lock down some places for, for some time, but it was not very for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got uh, uh, some challenges at this time, but uh, it's not like it last too long. Mm -hmm. So you managed to keep the in-person meetings, that is. So yeah. you were, you yeah. were meeting in person. So and and then we have talked um, talked about keeping in touch with the uh, uh, developers and other scientists and keeping in touch with uh, farmers. Uh, how do you keep in touch uh, with the government and and the policymakers? Yeah, uh, you see, in those in our, in, in in most of the countries, uh, there is uh, an organization around the NPPOs. Uh, we have organization around also the extension agencies, mm -hmm. and uh, this is well structured. So uh, you, when we have a meeting, we call a meeting, for example, with uh, extension agencies, and we discuss with the uh, extension agencies. We also have uh, we are fortunate to to be listened by the by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, we have a very uh, buying, strong buying from government uh, mm -hmm. so that the doors, government doors are really open to wave. And uh, it's easy to go to the Ministry of Agriculture, discuss with the Director of Plant Protection. Uh, so the, the communication is, is really effective. And uh, we understood early on that we really need to communicate. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you, when you invited us, we did not hesitate a minute. <laughs> and that's also the reason why uh, Madam Aja Aminata Njian, who is our communication officer, is also here attending uh, this seminar. So we put a, a very, very, uh, 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 a lot of importance in communication. So when uh, the, the government official sees in TV, on TV, we're talking with farmers and farmers saying, yeah, we have this problem, we have that problem. They can hear, they can see it, yeah. you know. And, uh, and, and there is this trust, this trust that has been built between farmers and WAVE that uh, the, the government official respect a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you on, on, on that, that thing that you just said about this trust between farmers 
and and wave. Um, how how do because this is uh, when when dealing with citizen science and 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 what you are doing is uh, with this way of surveying and the and the app that you are just uh, talking about Nuru, that's citizen science at its best. It's a uh, Typically, there is this problem that um, um, citizens and farmers uh, could feel like utilized by the researchers at some point and not um, part of the team. So how, could, how do you um, solve this, uh, this uh, possible perception? How do you solve this potential problem? Yeah. Um... You see, when we, I give you this, this example of Nuru, when you talk about Nuru, this app, we do not just go with the app to the field and start, you know, taking data. No. We, first of all, get permission from the government. You okay. know, the government is aware of what we're going to do. So the relevant ministries are aware so they give information to the regional uh, uh, offices inside the countries, you know. In addition to that, we go and we meet the chief of the villages, you know. You talk, you, and you listen. You know, it's not just to go and tell them, do this, do that, no. You have to listen to them because they are farmers. They are villagers, but they have their science. Mm -hmm. And sometimes their science is even better than ours. They don't know how to explain that, but mm -hmm. they, they made some of them observation. And they, 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 so you have to, most, of, most important is to listen to them. Mm -hmm. When they see that you are doing that, then you are developing this trust. But the fact that you come, through the chief of the village, you know, then they also know that this thing has the approval of the chief and they are more open for this. So uh, it, it's really uh, giving to them this sense of ownership of, mm -hmm. of this neuro app, or uh, what we're going to do and asking them, how can we do it better? Mm -hmm. And when they, they show you a way, you really have to, to listen, you know. So what they are saying about Wave is that, oh, that's, that's the type of, of training we were looking for before. That's the type of, uh, of, of collaboration with the scientists that, that is needed. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a really different approach, uh, but uh, we think it's working, uh, it's a good approach. Mm -hmm. so, so I understand that the, the co-design and the building on trust is, is the um, two sides of the same coin, really. Yes. But. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I will, I will um, take the opportunity again to remind the, the participants that uh, how to how to um, share with us their questions through the chat box and the, and the feature questions and answers. There is just one comment by WebCD. Good presentation, Professor Peter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, WebCD. <laughs> no, thank you for that. And, and then I will um, go back uh, to the inception of the project. So uh, we are dialing back to 2012. So that's when the, um, the idea came up. Could you, uh, because you were quite fast on that, on that part of the inception, could you expand on sure. it was who had the idea and who made together because it was two and a half years between the idea moment and the launch of the project. So things happen in the middle. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot happened uh, during this time. Um, I did my PhD in, 20, in 2002 mm -hmm. on cassava uh, virus diseases. I work on the epidemic of cassava diseases in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And from this epidemic, 3,000 people lost their lives not because of the virus, but because of the famine, you mm -hmm. know. So 
So as a PhD student, I went to Uganda, I collected a lot of samples there and I went to characterize the virus in the US. I did my PhD in the US. And uh, I was very marked by that. Uh, you have to see uh, cassava field burning. There was no fire, but it was the effect, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the result, the consequence of this epidemic that was moving from the north to the south of the country. Mm -hmm. And um, after defending my PhD, I moved to uh, another discipline, which was virus evolution, because I wanted to do something different. But uh, in uh, around 2012, we understood that uh, West Africa was at risk and uh, something has to be done. So I was at uh, Pennsylvania State University as a faculty and uh, I reached out to uh, colleagues in West Africa to say, what can we do? And that's where we said, why can't you, can we put a consortium in place? And I said, uh, let's see if the uh, Bill and Media Gate Foundation can help. But what I did to reach out to those colleagues is to go through the internet and see in each of the countries who was working, who was working on cassava diseases. That's where I identify uh, uh, those colleagues who were biologists working on cassava with very little trying to, uh, to help the farmers. And uh, I decided to go and meet the Bill and Gate Foundation. And that's where I met a program officer in 2012 in Uganda. Uh, there was a big meeting there. And we talked about this idea. But uh, I could say it took uh, more than two years because ideas like that have to be, uh, to, to be matured. And uh, uh, the, the foundation uh, gave me a contract as a consultant to travel in those countries and see the needs and see really which institution can be uh, 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 used to develop this network. So that's where we have many meetings with my colleagues, with Peter Ashot from, uh, from Benin, Togo, Ghana, uh, Nigeria. In Nigeria, there are three of them. And, uh, and among us, we really, thought about this thing, the foundation gave us we go ahead to write a proposal. Uh, proposal was written and uh, my colleagues really chose me to lead uh, uh, this, uh, this project. So I had to leave Penn State, Pennsylvania, the US to relocate into Africa. Uh, so during the inception meeting, we really realized that just alone, in West and Central Africa, we don't have all the laboratories, all the means to do what we want to do. And we need to collaborate with uh, teams across the world. And that's why we start working with, uh, we started working with uh, the Cambridge University, with the Gilligan's group and uh, the Scriptoria. Uh, and those, those groups, they got their own funding, but we decided to work together. Mm -hmm. And then what we, did was to do a lot of communication, really a lot of communication. And uh, by doing so, other countries were interested. They said, oh, we need to, we like to join with, what you are doing is important, we'd like to be part of it. And we grew the network uh, this way. Yeah. So it's really an idea that came from African scientists who went and looked for the funding themselves and are implementing this program themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, did you did you answer to a call that was already released by the uh, Bill and Melinda Foundation, or just contacted oh, them? We freelance? contacted them in uh, 2012 mm -hmm. and uh, said we think this is important. Uh, we need to work on that. We would like to have some help. And uh, so after all the discussions and. Uh, uh, we decided to to give approval for a, a proposal. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I can if I can recall the timeline, uh, first there was an idea, then you you uh, form an informal network of of researchers. 
yeah. and to search for some funding in order to research if the if the needs and the possibilities were real. Yes. And then you put together a proposal, uh, find more um, more partners, and apply for the re the real proposal and and funding. Yes. So that was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's, uh, it's it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we started uh, with BMGF, uh, BMD Gates Foundation, as our, uh, our, our donor. And mm -hmm. one year later, we uh, defeat uh, uh, the development and uh, office from the UK. They joined. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, till now, we are together. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was very very illustrative and i think it, it would be a useful information for for other researchers uh, who had also an idea and don't know what to do with it uh that's a a, pe a perfect plan it it went it read um it went really well in your case and i think it because it is a really good idea and it's really well implemented um we have just four minutes. I will remind the, the attendees that this is your time for uh, posting a question either in the chat or in the uh, Q, um, question and answer feature. And, and I will just ask uh, Professor Peter, and what's next? What, is, uh, what do you have problem in the next uh, weeks, months? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Isabel, for, for, for this question. Yeah, uh, when we see where we started and where we are now, we don't think that we can stop because the farmers are demanding. Mm -hmm. The farmers are counting on their daughters on, and, uh, and, and sons who are scientists. And uh, we think that uh, we need really to uh, secure sustainability for what we are doing. Because mm -hmm. as a project, as a programs, you know, if funding is finished, if BMGF or FCDO decide not to fund anymore, you know, uh, this uh, journey will stop. Mm -hmm. And we don't want this journey to stop. And we think that next step is really to create, you know, uh, this uh, institute. In, uh, this international center or international institute for uh, transboundary plant pathogens, mm -hmm. you know, for Central and West Africa uh, with a legal status, you know. So now we are hosted in the uh, University Felix of Obuanyi. So we are not an independent entity. Mm -hmm. And uh, this um, uh, status uh, is really... Uh, an obstacle for us to go further, mm -hmm. to do more. Uh, and uh, we call on people who can really help us to, 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 to really come and help us to, to move to the next level and to transition to, to this independent entity that we like to create. Mm -hmm. 